My name is Kate Mahoney. I'm the executive director of the Naomi Ruth Cohen Institute for Mental Health Education at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. I'm really delighted tonight that we have Kamisha Jones with us. She's a licensed social worker and the founder and the director of Sister Afia. And she's here today in particular because July is Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about some of the amazing programming that they do to help build awareness about, some, about mental health issues and to promote positive mental wellness. So, Kamisha, thank you so much for taking the time to come tonight and share your expertise with our viewers. Thank you for having me. Can you talk just a little bit about your organization, about you know, the reason why you founded it and some of the programming that you have? Yes, so um, Sister Afia was founded out of my personal uh, journey of struggling with a mental health condition. Um, in 2013, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and it was very challenging because I did not have the access to information or the resources or just having the community of support that I needed to be mentally well. And I was also, around that time, beginning my studies as a graduate social worker and um, once I was able to access that community support, my friends and family, when I was knowledgeable about the resources and when I had the correct information, my mental health symptoms improved dramatically and I was able to live with stability. And um, I also thought of ways that how could I help you know, other black women who are going through some of the same things that I'm going through to get the access to information, resources, and support that they would need to be able to have full lives, even if they live with mental health conditions. So in 2017, I launched a Sister Afia um, that focuses on black women's mental wellness through mental wellness education, resource connection, and community support um, that is simple, accessible, and it centers the experiences of black women. And I chose to focus on black women primarily because we are often put on the back burner. We are also um, within the black community carrying a lot of weight, a lot of responsibility, um, and we also have a lot of influence. So I thought about uh, targeting millennials because we're in that age demographic where people are really getting diagnosed with mental health conditions in their mm -hmm. young adult years and also um, given that black women are such huge influencers in the black community by um, making sure that black women are mentally well I believe that the community can be stronger so that was how Sisa Afia was founded and how um, we got to where we are today that's really an amazing story, I think, in terms of how your personal and professional lives have come together and that you really are focusing on the power of knowledge. When people have information, they can be healthier and the power of sort of social connectedness, yeah. um, which is wonderful. And I love that you're really looking at the strong influence that uh, women have, you know, in the black community and other communities in terms of really often being the leaders in terms of family health mm -hmm. and community health and helping people think about ways that they can be stronger and healthier. So it sounds like a really fabulous model that you've created. Yes, yes, and what makes Sisa Afia really different than a lot of organizations that currently exist is we really focus on community support as being the anchor to people improving their mental health symptoms and condition. So um, if you think about it, the mental health field as it stands is very individualistic. You have to navigate so many things on your own. So what Sisa Afia does is that we move the responsibility from individuals to community mm -hmm. to care for one another to um, be at the forefront of making sure that people are at being advocated for that they're being supported and oftentimes uh, that can uh, especially within black community studies have shown that group work group therapy is actually um, can yield better results than individual therapy so kind of pulling on that but also the culture of um, black people of having a collectivist culture um, and the power of community throughout our history. So kind of harnessing, you know, what is already in our culture with what works and bringing that together to make sure that people who have mental health conditions are supported and that they're able to not feel like they're alone when they're struggling with something that can be stigmatizing. And you're really building on the, the strength of community support and the network that already exists in the black community, but you're really trying to build on that, specifically focus on 
mental health, which still, in a lot of communities, still is um, way over stigmatized. You know, so many um, of us don't fully embrace the notion mm -hmm. that um, really there's no, we can't have any real health without positive mental health yep. and how uh, tied in it is to our physical health as well. So it sounds like you're really looking from a strengths perspective too in terms of how, how to build that connectedness even further. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one of the things that we do with Sisa Afia is we kind of take away a lot of the red tape that a lot of mental health organizations operate. And so we take things like things that we're just interested in and in bringing mental wellness into it. So I'll give an example. Yesterday we had a brunch where there are women who signed up for a brunch and we're at a restaurant and we just had some conversation starters on the table that focused on different questions related to mental wellness and women were able to talk about mental wellness in a communal setting at a brunch, right? Oh, so, how nice. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's thinking of like what do we already enjoy, what do we already like, and just pushing mental mental wellness into it. And um, we do have things that are traditional, such as support groups and workshops, but we've also found that people are very attracted to community education. So there might be somebody who would engage at a brunch or engage at a party or engage at a workshop before they engage in therapy or support groups. So some yeah. people kind of want to get their feet wet before going all the way into like traditional talk therapy. Uh, so those are some of the things that we do to kind of make mental mental wellness really easy and accessible and fun and not something that has to be so heavy um, right. in a drag. And so what's interesting is I think, you know, there's such innovation in what you're doing. And I think some of the reasons people are sometimes reluctant to s sign up for individual therapy or group therapy is it, it can feel like it's coming from a deficit perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's something wrong, I need help, as opposed to I want to do something positive for myself connect with community and being able to talk about important issues. So you're really sort of flipping it and reframing it in a way that is really positive. That's really exciting. Yeah, yeah, it is. And um, one of the things that I can say is because I live with a mental health condition, I have a deeper understanding of what it means to navigate systems, what it means to actually want to get out there. Um, and so I am always looking for community input as far as like what do people want to see. Uh, one thing with Sister Off is we've collected a lot of data within our first year. Mm -hmm. We've collected a lot of testimonials um, and we found out what people are really interested in and how what we're doing is effective. So um, we have a 4.7 out of 5 customer satisfaction rating. Wow, from that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So when people come to our events, we're always trying to figure out how were their experiences? Um, and then we also have a 100% recommendation uh, rating as well. So like 100% of people who come to our events actually said that they would recommend us to a family or friend. Wow, that's an incredible endorsement in terms of the benefits people are seeing and what you're doing. That's yes. really phenomenal. Yes. You know, we actually are lucky enough to have a caller right now. So I wanted to go ahead and have that caller come in. Yes, good evening. You know, everything you're saying is true. But the, but the Nicole, could you speak up a little louder? We're having a little hard time hearing you. Sure I can. Can you hear me now? A little bit louder. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. I feel like I'm on sprint. But, uh, <laughs> you know, everything you're saying is true. But the most important thing is education. Because you're not, in, I don't care what community you come from, white, Hispanic, African American, or any other community, if you don't have education, you're going to have nothing. And it starts at home. That's where it starts. When I was a girl, I'm a 70 year old Hispanic uh, veteran of, the, of, of uh, Vietnam. And the first thing I learned from my family was respect and pride. We don't well, have that anymore. 
And I think what you'd be interested to see is with, with Sister Afia, what really wonderful work they're doing both in terms of supporting people so that they can, I think you're talking about kind of formal education through school so that people can be mentally healthy and be able to achieve their goals. And then also that you provide really innovative, culturally relevant education about mental health and mental wellness. Yes, yes. So education is a huge part. And we serve people with various education levels. Some people who have formal education, some people who may not have graduated from high school. Um, but there are ways that we approach um, mental wellness that is simple for everybody. So I can give an example on our website. We have literally one pagers that explain a particular mental health condition or issue. So people don't have to go through all this box of information with really big medical words. It's just like, this is what depression looks like. This is the how it affects African Americans that are similar or different than other groups. And then we have our um, monthly workshops as well that people can come out to and they're able to like really dwell deep into mental wellness education. So formal education I believe is very very important um, in that formal education can can and does have a long-term positive impact on people as far as it relates to mental wellness but we also make sure that what we do is accessible to people regardless of their education level. And there's real power in that I think in the way you break things down make it simple and approachable and then again I think back to the caller's point by helping people be mentally healthy and mentally well they will have greater opportunities if they are interested in pursuing further formal education because they'll be more in balance. Um, and so it's a really nice way to think about all those issues together. Caller, we really want to thank you so much for your input and I think you've sparked an important piece of conversation here. So thank you so much for calling in. So as we think next, you know, I know in addition to some of the things you've talked about so far, you do other events as well. You've done some big events. I think you have an expo coming up. Yes, yes. So um, in about three weeks, we're going to have the second annual Black Mental Wellness Expo. Um, we're very excited about this event because, again, we want to make mental wellness accessible and simple for folks. So the expo, we're partnering with Breaking the Silence Mental Health Foundation, which they actually pay for people's mental health services. Um, Chanel uh, Hill, she is a social worker and she really focuses on the um, mental wellness and trauma in um, girls of color and we're also partnering with the University of Chicago, Hyde Park Arts Center, um, and uh, Church Off the Pews which is a, a church um, and congregation effort to really get involved in the community as it relates to mental wellness and so at the expo we're going to have workshops, we're going to have vendors um, who provide mental health and wellness services, music, food. It's really just going to be um, a fun experience for people to engage with other people in the community about different topics related to mental wellness. We will have um, workshops and resources that um, are catered to ch adolescents all the way to seniors. So this is something for the whole family. The whole spectrum, wow. Yep, That's yep. really fabulous. And I think uh, one of the other things that I think is notable about your work is how collaborative you are. That you look for other uh, community partners um, and so that people can work together and learn together and find support together. Uh, so that's another one of, I think, your kind of hallmarks, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. We do a lot of collaborating with um, different organizations or different businesses um, in the city that focus on mental wellness in a variety of different ways. So Haji Healing Salon, they are on the south side in Chatham and they provide holistic healing services that are centered, that are centered around the needs of black communities. So acupuncture, massage, Reiki, um, yoga, um, they also do spiritual readings and different things like that, but these are all things that um, are not necessarily as accessible and they have it at a much lower cost than it might be in other places. Mm -hmm. So we partner with places like that or Trap House Chicago, they um, use streetwear to talk about restorative justice, so they've been one of our partners as well and they um, are 
also on the south side and most of what we do is on the south side of Chicago and then we have breaking the silence which I mentioned earlier they mm -hmm. are a mental health foundation they pay for people's mental health services because we know one of the barriers is like you might find a therapist but you might not be able to pay for that therapist right, right? so how can we make it easier for folks and Kenya Atwater from that organization is really a trailblazer in making sure that people are being able to really access quality um, mental health services. And it sounds like you work then at, at multiple levels. First of all, trying to break down the stigma and, and build awareness that mental health is important and that it's something people should be able to talk about and that actually seeking services, again, should not be stigmatized, but it's a, a, a sign of strength when someone reaches out and says, I need some help and I could be stronger if I found appropriate services. And then we need to, of course, make sure that we have culturally relevant services available to um, people in communities across Chicago um, was really an important piece. And then the issue about access in terms of any financial barriers. So it really looks to me like you're being very comprehensive in terms of how you're approaching it at all levels to be able to be there to, to build mental wellness in the community. Yes, yes. And... Um one of the things that I think is unique about being a social worker is you are always thinking about those multiple systems. Mm -hmm. And I know as the social worker as well, you're probably thinking about multiple systems in a way that other professionals might not be Absolutely. thinking about. Yeah. So I'm also looking at access as well. So in my um, one of my day jobs, I'm a case manager. So all I do is connect people with resources all day. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I have a deeper insight into what's out there and how to access it. So you have the part of people are really prompted in this moment to actually go and seek therapy, actually go and, you know, take those steps to take care of their mental health condition. But when it comes to access, especially when it comes to finances, is a huge barrier for um, people in the black community, like humongous. And so what, what exists out there for people who don't necessarily have a lot of money? How can we make um, mental wellness, quality mental wellness services? Services available to people of various income levels oh, wow. and you're getting a peer and skills based support group um, and it's not to supplement therapy but literally sometimes it can be an option for people who might not be able to get to therapy just just then but yeah we really want to make sure that what we do is accessible the expo is free all of our large-scale community events are free and so we don't want cost to be a barrier for anybody to be able to receive quality mental wellness services that are centered around their experiences and needs. And then we would love to be able to link some of your programs to our website so our viewers who are used to uh, taking a look at what we do at the um, Naomi Ruth Cohen Institute, and I'm just going to quickly flash um, our information that they could connect on our website to find your, your information. Um, we really want to make sure that all of our viewers have access to all the wonderful programming that you're doing in the community, and that's a way we could connect there and also through our Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, so people could look either look up Sista Afia, hopefully they can um, just Google that and find you. Um, but if they have a hard time with that, they'll be able to do that on our website and we'll be able to connect back that way, which will make, make good sense. I also just, I can't let the show go by without thanking you for your courage about sharing your own story um, and your own um, uh, courageous um, approach to your mental health condition. Um, I, everyone needs to be able to talk and decide themselves whether or not they feel comfortable sharing about any health condition that they mm -hmm. have. But as more and more people do feel comfortable and do have the courage to share and then get the support, we can start changing the conversation. So I would never want anyone to feel pressured, but the fact that you were willing to be so open that part of your work is really comes from your own experience, I think speaks volumes to individuals and you're helping to open doors for so many people by your willingness to share. And I think people can look at you all, you've created your ed fabulous education, the organization you founded, and, and see all that people who are living with a mental health condition can really do phenomenal things, live very full lives, um, achieve a lot, contribute a lot to the community. And so you're an incredible role model. Um, and I just want to really, again, thank you for sharing that because I think it can be challenging. Um, yeah. 
and I'm sure you, you know you've had to make some decisions about when you felt comfortable doing so and and it seems like you made that decision because you wanted to impact the lives of others and be there to help people yeah absolutely and one thing I can say about um, my particular decision was that once I was able to call out what I was dealing with and able to address it, the more I talked about it, the weight just came off. It's nothing for me to tell somebody that I have bipolar disorder, I have a mental health condition. It doesn't hurt anymore. And I think from being able to share, that's what that did, whether it was privately or publicly. Um, but then I also believe that walking in your truth is very, very important. I think one of the biggest things with stigma and mental health conditions are, is that people um, are in denial about it. And they were like, no, I don't have it. And I did that at first. Mm -hmm. When somebody told me, it was like, oh, have bipolar. So I was like, I don't have that. That's for crazy people, you know? But once I accepted it after a, a different uh, circumstances that I came into, then I was like, okay, I have this now. I can address it, right? right. Um, so I think whether it's publicly or privately, being honest about where you are, it helps you to get help. So one of the things, particularly for um, black people, African Americans, is that it takes us longer to get treatment. Mm -hmm. So we might be recognizing it earlier, but we're not seeking treatment as quick. And what we know is that the longer you go without treatment or any type of healing services, the more it, it, it gets worse. Right. And so we can get people to catch it in the beginning stages. It might not progress to be something worse off. Um, and so I think not even just like sharing your story, but actually getting help sooner um, can make a huge impact on the um, trajectory of your life. And, what, and that's true of most health issues, right? Early identification, um, early intervention, for almost any health condition, you know, that's part of why many of us go through regular screenings every year for cancer and we get blood work done to you know, check our blood sugar levels and everything else to really make sure that if there is any problem brewing that we get help as early as possible because the prognosis is better. And so that's amazing and I'm glad you, you shared that. Um, and then it just really sounds like when you spoke your truth that you actually took your own power back and, and really kind of cut through or, cut or eliminated the power of stigma because you said, this is my truth. I'm naming it, I'm addressing it, and I'm going to share with others so that other people can do the same. And so that's really incredible. What a gift you've given to the community. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. And even though, um, even though I live with a mental health condition and I've been able to be successful in other areas, it's still a challenge, you know. I go to a psychiatrist, I go to a therapist, I do holistic healing stuff. I do a lot to keep everything balanced. So I also want to let people know that healing and treatment, it takes work. I've put in so many work, so much work, so many hours to be stable. Um, and so I also want to let people know when you're making the decision to prioritize your mental wellness, know that it's going to take effort. It's going to take work. It's going to take vulnerability. And even though it might be hard in some moments, it's going to pay off in the long run. And I'm just a living testimony of that. So I really encourage people to be able to put in that work for yourself. You're worth it. You are worth um, having the life, the goals, the the um, things that you want to accomplish in life, uh, you are worth it. And so really prioritizing mental wellness, at least for Sister Afia as it relates to black women, but anybody is that we want people to be able to see that they are worth it and that they um, deserve to have a full and whole life. And that is the that is the true vision of Sister Afia. That is such an incredible mission. What, a, what an outstanding organization and the fact that you're here and really changing the lives first of black women, but then really knowing that black women are then going to be healing the whole community, be leaders in, in health care and identifying issues um, is really, really incredible. And as you talked about the work that it takes to address a mental health condition, um, it's very similar to um, addressing any other health condition that you have to find the right um, caregivers, you have to be proactive about your health. Um, you have to work hard at it and make yourself a priority. Yep. And that's really one of the places that often it's hard, I think, for anyone. I know certainly it's hard for a lot of women, I think particularly for a lot of black women, is saying, 
I, you know, you've been caretakers to lots of other people, but you are uh, worth it to make yourself a priority. And I think with that, we're going to say uh, goodbye for this evening, but I certainly Thank hope you. you'll come back again because what you're doing is, is really blazing a trail and um, we want to watch what comes later. So thank you so much. Thank you.